Hello, gentlemen. Nice to see you. How are you? Uh, Good. Great okay. so far. Um, congratulations on Sun House. I wasn't familiar with this story, but thanks to your incredible show, I am now uh, more familiar with it. And now that you know and been able to research so much about John Sun House and the family, what do you make of Sun House? Because you know, in history, we often have the villain and the good guy, and sometimes it's not that simple. It's certainly not that simple in politics, I guess. What do you make of him? What version of Sun House do we have in the show? Who's going to feel this go on, you one? Go, you go, John. Oh God! <laughs> well, I think um, I think if you look at the arc of his story, you know he starts off as an extremely idealistic young man uh, mm -hmm. who believes wholeheartedly that he's someone of great principle. And what happens to him during the the course of the story is that. Um, partly through his, well, entirely through his own behavior, but also through circumstance as well. Um, he starts behaving in an increasingly unprincipled manner. But Stonehouse himself never sees that. He never realizes what a complete idiot he, he's making of himself. So there's a kind of that gap between his conception of himself and the way that we see um, Stonehouse. That's, you know, comedy works within that gap. But there is something, it is also a tragic, a tragic story because this is someone who was, um, when he started out, hailed as, as kind of possibly you know, would become prime minister. And, you know, as we know, he ends up going to prison and his life completely falls to pieces. So I think, you know, that is the sweep that we tried to kind of take in. I was wondering in terms of research and how much access you had to I don't know if there were top secret files or not, uh, especially about his past as a spy, because we hear that there weren't enough proof to, for him to be charged with uh, treason, I guess. And then you hear that there were proofs, but it's it's too late, sort of. <laughs> well, go on, John, because I, I can, I can do this if you want. I mean, now I'm yeah, very happy to do it. I mean, basically, there is a large file on Stonehouse in the Ser Secret Service archive in Prague which has got a lot of accounts of meetings that he had with his handlers in London and indeed photographs of him walking around London with his Czech handlers. So there's really no doubt that Stonehouse was a spy. He wasn't a very competent spy, but he was nonetheless a spy. I right. think as well, you know, you were saying about that there was not enough evidence to charge him. I think a lot of this uh, was not available at the time. Yeah, that, that's that's evidence. certainly true. Yeah. That's yeah. Evidence so this is post-1989, post-Berlin Wall coming down and so on, so the Velvet Revolution in, che in the Czechoslovakia as it then was. So, yeah, a lot of stuff has come out subsequently that wasn't available at the time. Obviously, now that the show is out, uh, Stonehouse family is speaking out. Uh, I was wondering, as a director and as a writer, how do you deal with negative reactions from the family, especially, uh, I think it's Julia, uh, his daughter, who was always so protective towards and who's always claimed that her father wasn't a spy. How do you deal with that? I, I'm, and I mean, I love what you did. I'm just speaking from another point of view. Yeah, no, it's, it's a good question. I think that, uh, well, first first things first is I think we've been incredibly fair to John Stonehouse, given all the information we have on him um, and, uh, you know, how we have portrayed him. Okay, we, we've, we've, we've taken a comedic route, but if you look at some of the things he has done, primarily left his wife and kids knowing that he may never see them again and with them believing that he was dead. It's an incredibly cruel thing to do, you know. Um, now, I think when you watch the show, you know, as, as someone not, not, uh, and it doesn't have a personal involvement with it, I think you can't deny that at the end you feel something for him because he's, it's, it's tragic, you know, it's a comedy, but it's, it's, it's quite tragic what happened to him. He sort of, at the end, had, had pretty much nothing. He was laid bare and, and, and all his sort of masks and disguises had came off and, and we saw who he, he was, you know, but, I think that Julia in particular, his daughter, w w didn't want to be involved uh, with this project from the very beginning. So you're fighting a losing battle with someone who, who, who before they even read a word of the script, doesn't want anything to do with it. You know, you, you, I have done a lot of true stories in the past, 
movies and, and I've always met uh, uh, people involved. If they're not living, then they're relatives and, 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 and stuff. And, and John, yeah. uh, John sat down with, uh, with, with Julie and met her, did the same thing, but she didn't want to know at the beginning. So it's very difficult for someone to then come on, you know, come, come on side if their version of, of it is different from ours. Ours is not a documentary. Ours is, a, is, is an entertainment show. It's got comedy. It's based on a true story, as it says at the beginning. Um, but I think we, we, you know, having all the, the evidence about John Stonehouse in terms of what he did as a person and who he really was as a person, I think we've been incredibly fair to him, incredibly fair to his legacy. I think we have. And Albeit, I also yeah. think, and I think that it's just worth pointing out that I think, I hope, and certainly this was my intention when I was writing it, um, and it very much comes through in the way that John has directed it, it is a very humane portrayal of Stonehouse. Um, and, and so we're not, um, we're not trying to judge him. We're not mm -hmm. actually pillaring him for mm -hmm. the way that he behaved in many respects. You know, I think he, you could argue he gets off very lightly. I was speaking with uh, Matthew just before, and uh, I was saying that he's neither, I didn't think he was neither uh, hateful nor extremely likable, especially what he did uh, to his family. Um, it, it's, it's just facts after facts. Yes, it's comedic, but it's just facts after facts. Yeah, well, exactly. And, and, um, and one of the things that, you know, I wanted to bring out uh, and I, because I think that it gives the story some resonance and some relevance is that, and I don't think it's necessarily true of UK politicians, I think it's true of politicians everywhere, that, you know, they do exist in this kind of hermetic bubble and, mm. and they, what they tend to lose um, because they're being flattered the whole time and, and, you know, they see themselves on television and they start to believe their own publicity. And if they ever had an ability to look themselves in the mirror and think, hold on, am I behaving like a complete idiot here? They quite often lose that utterly. Yeah. And certainly Stonehouse, who I'm not sure I ever had any sense of absurdity to begin with, but whatever, whatever tiny shreds of it he may have had certainly disappear over the course of you know, the three episodes. In to, I think it's going to be my last question they're giving me the wrap. Um, in terms of what's true, what's not true, the beginning of each episode has uh, some events have been uh, created and some characters that are fictionalized. What, how do you choose what you want to incorporate and how, what kind of tone you want to give to the creative things that you're adding to this true story? Because it's obviously it's going to um, impact the true elements the story is based on. I've got a horrible feeling that might be another question for me. Go on, John. Uh, I'd be very guess, happy if John wanted guess, to answer. No, go on, well, go on, you're right. <laughs> I mean, um, I think, you know, the, the key thing is we're not making a documentary. Um, and so that, you know, that's point number one. And point number two is that when real life serves up a story as good as this, why monkey around with it any more than you need to? So oh. actually the amount of kind of tweaking is really pretty negligible um mm. and you know once or twice you've kind of you're knitting things together slightly more tightly if you can knit tightly then they, they may have happened in real life but that's that's as far as it goes thank you so much gentlemen for joining me today it's so interesting i could speak to you for 12 hours it's so interesting to speak with you uh congratulations on sun house i, I think I wasn't aware of this story and I think it was a pretty good introduction, really. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank